Hey, Deserving Listeners, it's time to continue watching Angela and Michael on 90 Day Fiancé before the 90 days. Let's get to it. My name is Dr. Kirk Honda. I'm a therapist and a professor. I'm going to react as I watch, and let's see if anything of interest comes out of my face. What? Michael's 75 years old. That will make you 50. Are you going to be able to take care of me, Michael? Have you thought about that? Okay. Yeah. But let me give you another thought. Can you wipe my butt, Michael, if I'm not able to? <laughs> so actually, I'm going to commend Angela for having this conversation because a lot of the couples on this show fail to have all sorts of conversations that they should have. And this is a reality, a possibility. She's saying, look, if, if you're going to marry me, you got to know that in 20, 25 years, you're going to be taking care of me, which might actually involve what she just mentioned. <laughs> and are you prepared to do that? Is that a deal breaker for you? Because if it's not, then OK. But if it is, then maybe we should call this thing off. A lot of couples on this show, they, I mean, I don't think they always have to talk about this necessarily, but things like wanting to have kids or where you're going to live or, you know, all those kinds of things. So, you know, I commend Angela for being up front and talking about something that actually a lot of couples should talk about. This is good. Let's see what he says. Are you going to treat me the same way? I need to know this for me. Uh, good question. Uh, I. What's the answer, Michael? Don't worry about that, okay? I always push Michael to give me the story. I want to hear the real Mike. Right. That was my suspicion, was that because he's so reserved and quiet, it's disturbing her and making her feel worried or hurt or there's a distance there. And we see this on the show sometimes where someone is nice, but they're almost kind of like a ghost, meaning that the Angelas of the show will be reaching out and trying to have contact with another human being. And although sometimes it's nice to have someone that's very compliant and goes along with you, but other times you want some pushback. You want some human there, not necessarily in conflict, but just someone who has passion, someone who has thoughts and ideas and motivations and ambitions and, and feelings and needs. And, you know, they're in the room. They're, 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 they're present. They're with you. And that was my suspicion was that in her way, she's been trying to provoke him. And, and sometimes people will do this. I don't recommend people do this, honestly, because I don't think it usually works. But a lot of the Angelas of the world will, will amp up their anger and they'll amp up their provocations of conflict. They'll, they'll poke at the other person, hoping that the other person will fight back not because they want to get into a conflict, but they want some contact with the other person and they're trying to provoke the person to stand up. But what it can do is actually just cause the reserved person to become even more reserved and more cowering and more compliant. A more direct way, a more functional way is just to say, hey, honey, I, I just really want to know who you are. And I'm finding that when we talk, I have a hard time understanding who you are and what your subjective experience is, what your needs are, what, what your emotions are. And so can we talk about that? And maybe start small. Maybe start with like, what's your favorite food? Or tell me about a thing that happened in your childhood. And, you know, and then you can ramp up to more advanced things with people as, as the reserved people become more comfortable in the relationship. So let's continue watching. You know, don't tell me what I want to hear. Tell me what you feel. You know, one thing um, I'm like thinking about, I mean, worried about, it's to have my own kids so my kids will bear my name. I mean, you know. Michael, but you know care. my age. But I think there are ways you can do that. But Michael, that's a lot of money, man. I know. That, that uh, artificial sermonation. So two thumbs up to him. He is talking about what he wants. Instead of putting it off, he wants to have kids. And he says, you know, let's, let's explore the various different ways in which we can have kids. And they're talking about it. So that's good. You know, it's a great conversation. A lot of people fail to have this conversation prior to becoming engaged. So this is good. Good and functional. Some money, baby. That's like twenty, thirty thousand dollars 
and you better pray it takes, you know? So if I couldn't, what, what, are you gonna leave me? It's important for me to have kids. So the age difference bothers me a lot. So great on Angela. She's just cutting to the chase and she's saying, look, it's going to be hard. It's expensive. It's probably not going to happen. If it's not going to happen, are you going to leave me? And she's uncomplicated in that question. You know, she doesn't want him to say, yes, I'm going to leave you. But she is not pressuring. She's like, so I'm just curious, is this a deal breaker for you? So it's a good way of asking. Let's see what he says. I believe she wants me to talk more, you know, to talk about what I want to say. But I can't because I don't want to get uh, get upset anymore. I'm going to be by your side because you've been... If I can't you, afford you, to get another baby. I, I believe so much, you know? You solution. always have a way to make me feel better, Michael. Sure, sure. I believe that. I love you, Michael. Really. Love you. Okay. So I, I think they're hearing something different from each other than what I'm hearing anyway. What he's saying is, because, you know, she says, is it a deal breaker? And he said, his answer is, I'm sure there's going to be a way. So by implication, it sounds like it is kind of a deal breaker for him. And he just doesn't want to accept that it's not likely to happen. He's like, I'm sure there's going to be a way. We're, we're going we're gonna to find a way. And then she's interpreting it as, oh, you're just so optimistic or you're just so into me or something. But I would pause them and I would ask Angela, I would say like, so I think what he's saying is he's de he's determined to have kids and he's going to make it happen one way or the other. And he's just optimistic that there's going to be a solution. Is that something you want to do, Angela? And it sounds like Angela might be up for it anyway, but I'm hearing something a little different than I think they're hearing from each other. My social media is part of me, you know, and the more people you follow, the more uh, people will see your post, you know. So uh, I follow a lot of random women. I don't have anything to do with them. I mean, I don't talk to them, honestly. If they're not your friends and you don't talk to them, why the hell are you following all them? freaking women. I have no reason. No, I have no reason. Okay, so I think both of them are in the right. They're having a good conversation about it. Hopefully, Angela can hear him. He is on Instagram, and he likes to do stuff on Instagram, and he says that, look, you know, when you follow people, people follow you back, and then when you post things, then more people see your things, and then that's Kind of the reason why a lot of people use Instagram is to get lots of people to see your things. <laughs> and he's saying, look, I follow a lot of people. And yeah, some of them happen to be women, but I don't have anything to do with them. And it's just, it's just social media stuff. Okay, so he is in the right. She's in the right as well that she's looking at him and, and she's threatened by that and she wants some reassurance. Now, what a lot of people will do in Angela's shoes is they will control as a way. So what's happening is they're seeing, oh, my man has a bunch of Instagram. He's following a lot of women. And so that's, that's the data point. That's the beginning point. The interpretation is he's following those women possibly because he's attracted to those women. Now that's an assumption. The extension from that is He's attracted to those women. The women are attracted to him back, and those people might steal my man from me. Then I will be alone, and then I will be hurt, and I'm afraid of that. And so I'm going to skip the line, so to speak, and go right to the front and say, you need to unfollow all those people instead of addressing what really is the problem because the, the problem isn't that he's following a bunch of people on Instagram. The problem is that she feels insecure, which is fine. They're in the begin, beginning of a relationship. It's normal to have that happen. So a more functional way to communicate is, so when I saw all those things on Instagram, I had a worry, I had a fear that you like those women and that you're going to leave me for those women or those women are going to tempt you away from me. And I'm worried about that. And then he can say, okay, thank you for telling me that. Um, I'm not going to leave you for those women. And then maybe he comes to his own conclusion and he says, you know what? I'm going to unfollow all those women 
because I don't want to trigger you in this way. And then she says, oh, thank you. Uh, but she's not doing that. She's, she's skipping the line. She's leapfrogging all those steps. And she's not thinking about her primary emotion of fear. She's not communicating it. She's not giving him a chance. And she's just saying, you are a jerk face, one, which is kind of an accusation that I don't think is fair. And two, you're going to stop following those women. So when you do this kind of behavior, what it does to the Michaels of the world is they feel hurt. They feel disrespected. They feel bull- bulldozed. They feel accused of things that aren't, don't seem fair to them. I'm just like, Michael might be saying, I feel like she's accusing me of cheating on her. I just follow a lot of people on Instagram, and some of them happen to be women. What's the big deal? I mean, I, I'm with her. I'm going to marry her. Why does she think – what does she think is going to happen? With, you know? So to be bulldozed like that, you get hurt, and if you don't have a way of communicating about that, you resent that, and then you pull away, and then Angela actually will get what she is worried about, which is him pulling away and possibly being with someone else. So let's see how they navigate this conversation. So you're telling me you don't look at their clothes they're wearing, you don't look at their big booties, you don't look at their poses, you don't look at their face, you just accept them. Calm down, please, okay? Are you are you masturbating and you say you don't? I don't know. I mean, you got all these women that are beautiful. So I think this is one of those moments where she's wanting him to step up and be a communicator like her. And he is wanting her to calm down and communicate in the way that he likes to communicate. So she is ramp as he calms down, she's ramping up, which causes him to get quieter, which causes her to get louder. I think that's the dynamic that we're seeing. And both of them are causing that to happen. As he pulls away, she escalates and leans in. As she leans in, he pulls away and leans back. So either one of them can interrupt this cycle. Either she could take a breath and say, okay, calm down. It's just Instagram. He's he's not cheating on me. I'm I'm triggered right now. And or he could say, okay, I'm going to start saying stuff. I'm going to say, hey, Angela, listen to me. I'm not cheating on you. I'm just following those women. If you want me to unfollow, I will. But I don't appreciate you accusing me of that. And I'm guessing that if he did that, that would be the contact that she's looking for that will indicate to her that he is involved emotionally in the relationship. So I'm guessing this is just going to get worse. He'll pull away. She'll escalate. And she'll escalate and he'll pull away. Let's watch. Short time here in Nigeria left with Michael. And the clock is ticking. I'll get you done. I'll, I'll get you off my page, okay? Just for you to, to be happy, okay? I don't want to lose you. I'll fix you, all right? Okay, so that was pretty functional for him. He's like, okay, I'll get rid of it. I don't want to lose you. I love you. I, okay, I, I'm reassured. So that's probably the right move to de-escalate. But it's still in this dynamic where he is complying. She is barking at him. And he is just doing whatever she wants instead of saying something like, hey, I'll do what you want. I'll unfollow. I'll I'll fix it. I love you. I don't want to lose you. Are we okay? Okay. Now I want to talk about the way you talk to me. The way you talk to me just then, there's a much nicer way you could have asked me all those things. I'm open to unfollowing those people. But the way you talk to me, accusing me of all those things, like it's hurt. It hurts. And it, I don't, I don't think it's fair. And I'm, I don't like it. I don't like, I don't like it when you do that. It hurts my feelings. It makes me not want to be with you. So can you just bring it down a notch and trust me that you could just ask me more directly, and I'll, you know, I'll, I'll do it. So I, I'm a little worried about this dynamic of her escalating, him withdrawing, and then he uh, complies, and then she calms down. I feel he's, he's, he's the one. But then again, I, then I'm confused. But every relationship has doubt, Scotty. But every relationship, Mama, is not leaning on a visa or not a visa. That's the freaking difference. You see what I'm saying? All right. Well, that does it for that episode of Psychology in Seattle. Everyone out there, please take care of yourself because you deserve it. You really, really do.